In this tutorial, I'll show you how to rig gears in Blender using object constraints. So I'll first show you how to rig two gears together so that they rotate correctly and the teeth don't overlap. I'll also show you how to rig them so that they can rotate in the correct directions because this gear is rotating counterclockwise and this gear is rotating clockwise. Then I'll also show you how to rig a smaller gear because smaller gears have to rotate faster to rotate correctly. And then finally, I'll show you how to rotate a gear which is going in a different direction. And if you'd like to download the free project files of this tutorial, I'll have a free download on my Gumroad store and Patreon page linked in the video description. And if you'd like to send me a little tip to help support this channel, you can throw a few dollars into the price box on Gumroad before purchasing, that's a great way to help support this channel, or you can just punch in zero on the price box and download for free on my Gumroad store. Now real quick, before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to let you know about my Sci-Fi Construction Robot Blender tutorial series. So it's an 11 part tutorial series, it's all step by step and in real time, and throughout the tutorial series I show you how to create this sci-fi construction robot animation. So the course covers the entire process, including modeling the robot, doing the rigging, the materials, and the animation. And so by the end of the tutorial series you'll have this finished robot animation. If you're interested in learning more about the course, you can check out the product pages linked in the description. So in a new scene in Blender, I'm just going to start by deleting everything, and then to model a basic gear I'll be using a built-in Blender add-on. So let's click on edit, we'll go to the preferences, and we're going to go over to the Get Extensions tab, and we're going to search for Extra. And you can turn on this Extra Mesh Object, so just install the add-on, and then if you go to the Add-ons tab and search for it by typing Extra and Extra Mesh Objects. So I'm just going to close the user preferences. Now if I go to the Add menu and I go to Mesh, there's all these new Mesh Objects, and I'm going to go to Gear, and then I'm going to add this gear here. Now don't click away and don't move the gear around. Right behind me, if you click on the Add Gear Settings, you can change a bunch of the settings of the gear. So here on the number of teeth. I'm going to change this to 20 because I want 20 teeth. And then there's a bunch of other things you can change like the radius and the width. I'm not really going to play around with these for now. I'm just going to set it to 20 teeth. So let's close the add gear settings. And then real quick, I'll do a little bit of modeling to make this look a bit nicer. So I'm just going to hold down the alt key, select that bottom loop, hit the F key to fill that. Let's select this loop here on the top. So hold down the alt key, select that loop there. We're going to scale it down. Then we can extrude it and we can bring it down the Z axis. Then we can extrude it and then scale it down. And then we can extrude it and bring it up on the z-axis and then we'll hit F to fill a face there. So now back in object mode I'm just going to add a few modifiers. So I'm just going to add a bevel modifier. On the segments I'm going to turn this up to like a 4 and on the amount here I'll turn this really small so it's a small value. And then we'll just shade this smooth using the object context menu. And then also what I'm going to do is add a weighted normal. So add the weighted normal modifier and that's just going to flatten up and sharpen up the flat faces. So now let's duplicate this gear and we're going to move it over here and we'll go to top view and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to rotate the gear a little bit just so that the teeth are kind of connecting just like that. So now what I want to do is add an object constraint to this gear, and this gear is going to be the controller. So this gear, we're going to have control all of the other gears. Now because this gear is going to be the controller gear, what I'm going to do is go here to the materials, we'll click on new to add a new material, and I'm going to go down here, just close these tabs, and open up the viewport display. And on the color here, I'm just going to make this a blue color, just so we can remember that that's the controller gear. So we'll now select the other gear, and we're going to go here to the constraints, and on the object constraints, we're going to click on add object constraint and we're going to add the transformation. So right here add transformation. So what we can do with the transformation is we can tell it that when one object transforms, so that would either be a location, rotation, or scale, that is going to make another object do the other transform. So here on the target object we want to click on the eyedropper and we want to choose the blue gear. So we're telling it that this is going to be the target so then when this object transforms that's going to affect the other gear. Let's open up the map to and the map from. So the map from is what translation this object is going to do, and then the map to is what is this object going to do when the other object is transformed. So because we want this object rotating to affect this object rotating, we want to change the map from to rotation and the map to to rotation as well. Now to make this easier to see, I'm going to animate the first gear so that it's always spinning. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I'm on frame one and I'll hit the K button and insert rotation. Then I'm going to go all the way over to the end, so 250, and I'll rotate it on the Z axis and just rotate it around, hit K and then add rotation. Then if I select the keyframes here by hitting the A key in the timeline, I'll hit the T key and I'm going to change the keyframe interpolation to linear and that way when I hit the space 
next part of play this, it's moving at a consistent speed. Let's select the second gear again. So what we want to do is tell it that when this gear rotates on the Z axis, that is also going to make this gear rotate on the Z axis. So the map from is what is this object doing? The blue gear. So we want it to rotate on the Z axis. So you can see there is an X, Y and Z, and on the Z maximum, we want to turn this all the way up to 180. Now on the map 2, there is X, Y, and Z on the rotation. So on the Z one, we want to turn this all the way up to 180. Now if I go back to the starting and play this, you can see it's now rotating. Now one problem is that when it rotates by 180 degrees, it stops. And that is because right here you can see the very maximum value is 180. So as this moves, it stops when it rotates by 180. Now to fix this, we can scroll up to the top and we can check mark the extrapolate. And this is basically going to loop it. So once it gets to 180, it's just going to continue to rotate and rotate by 180. So now when I play this, even if I go farther in the timeline, it's just going to continue to rotate and rotate. Now there's another problem and that is that it's rotating in the opposite direction. So if we go down here to the very bottom on the map too, instead of it rotating by 180, we can make it rotate by negative 180. So this way it's going to rotate in the opposite direction. So now you can see the gears rotate correctly. Now, if we duplicate this gear and move it over here, you can see now again, it's rotating in the opposite direction. So what we want to do is scroll down on the transformation, and instead of using negative 180, we just want to use 180. And now it's going to rotate correctly, and then you can see that it's a bit offset, so just to fix that, you can just rotate this gear, just rotate it like that so that the teeth are overlapping. Now what if you want a smaller gear? Well with a smaller gear, the gears actually have to rotate faster to stay up to speed with the teeth. So what I'm going to do is select everything and move it out of the way. Let's go to the add menu and I can go down here to mesh and just add another gear and just add gear. Now for this one, I want to make it smaller and then I also want there to be less teeth. So I'm going to make this gear half the size and it's also going to have half the amount of teeth. So if I click here to open up the add gear settings, let's take the number of teeth and turn it to 10. So there's just half as many of them. And then we can also drag this radius down and I'm going to turn the radius to 0.5 instead of 1. So now it's just at half the size. So let's close the add gear settings, and then I can select these and kind of move them back here. And then let's just do a little bit of simple modeling. So if I go into edit mode, we'll select that loop there and fill a face. Let's select this loop and scale it up. And then I can extrude it to bring it down the Z axis and I can extrude it and then scale it. And then I will extrude it and bring it up on the Z axis and then I'll hit F to fill that face there. And then what I'm gonna do in object mode is select the gear and shift select the other gear and we can just use control L so hit control L and we can copy modifiers. So now it has the same modifiers as the other gear and just make sure you shade it smooth. So let's select this gear. We'll go back to frame zero and I'm just gonna drag this here. Let's just drag it down and we're just gonna stick it like right in there. So now let's click on add object constraint and we're gonna add the transformation. So on the target, again, we want to choose the blue gear because that's the controller. And then we also want to turn on the extrapolate so it continues to loop and it continues to rotate. So we're now going to open up the map to and the map from. Now again, we have options for the location, rotation, and scale. But in this case, when this gear rotates, I want this gear to rotate. So on the map from, it's going to be rotation. And then in turn, that'll make the gear that we have selected be rotating as well. So turn these both to rotation. So now let's add the same values. So here on the Z, we want to rotate on the Z. So here on the rotation Z max, we're gonna turn this all the way up to 180. And then the rotation here on the Z source axis here, we want to turn this bottom one all the way up to 180 as well. So now if I play this, you can see it's rotating in the wrong direction. So instead of it being at 180, we're gonna make it negative 180. Now the problem with this is that the gear is much smaller, it's half the size, and so it needs to spin a lot faster. So what we can do is we can take the map from and we can turn this value down. And if I turn this to a really small value, it's gonna rotate much faster. So for example, if I turn the max to 10, basically what we're doing is we're saying that when this gear rotates by 10 degrees, that is gonna make this gear rotate by negative 180. So that's why it's spinning around faster when this value is smaller. Because this gear is half the size, we want it to spin at double the speed. So instead of 180, we're gonna turn this 
to 90 because 90 is a half of 180. And now when I play this, you can see it's rotating correctly. Now we just need to rotate the gear manually and kind of fix the offset. So now I can duplicate this gear and let's maybe bring it up here. And you can see it's rotating at the wrong rotation again. So instead of negative 180, we're just gonna change it to 180. And then I can just manually kind of adjust the rotation. So that's how you can rig gears which are smaller. Now let's say that you want to have a gear which is rotating in a different direction. So I'm going to select this gear and I'm going to duplicate it and move it over. And if I try to rotate this like on the Z or Y axis, it's kind of getting messed up and that's because of the transformation. So we'll just delete the transformation and then I can rotate this. We'll rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then I'm going to hit negative so it's rotated over by negative 90 degrees so the front is in that direction let's now bring it over and i can bring it up and let's look down here and i'm just gonna bring it in like that and then i can just rotate it we're going to rotate it on the x-axis to fix the offset so now we're going to select this gear we're going to go to add object constraint and again we're going to add transformation so on the target again we want to choose the blue gear that's the controller gear and then we also want to turn on extrapolate so it continues to loop and continues to rotate we're now going to open up the map to and map from and just like we've done before we want the rotation of this gear to affect the rotation of this gear. So the map from is gonna be rotation and the map to is also gonna be rotation. So now here again, this object, this gear here is still rotating on the Z axis. So what we wanna do here by selecting this gear, we wanna turn the Z maximum to 180, just like we've done before. Now with the map to, this is where it gets a little bit different because instead of this object making this object rotate along the Z, we want it to rotate along the x instead so we're going to use the x source axis so on the maximum i can turn this to 180 and now when i play this you can see it's not working now there's a few reasons for this one reason is that this gear is rotating along the z axis so if we click back on the vertical gear we need to change the x source axis not to x but to z so now when I play this, it is rotating, but you can see the rotation is wrong. That is because we rotated the gear. So what we wanna do is just hit Control A and we want to apply the rotation. Now when I play this, you can see it's rotating correctly. And then you can see that the gear teeth are overlapping. So if we just rotate this along the X axis, I can rotate it back just like that. And now it's rotating correctly. Now one more quick thing I wanted to mention, and that is if I press Control Z and go back to before I applied the object's rotation. So if for some reason I didn't want to apply the object's rotation, what I would need to do is use the Y source axis instead. So I haven't applied the rotation because I hit Control Z to undo that. So if I turn this up here, turn this to 180 and play this and change the X source axis to Z, you can see it's rotating incorrectly because I didn't apply the object's rotation. So instead, we're going to keep the X source axis kept to zero and we're going to use the Y one instead. So on the Y source axis, on the maximum, we're going to turn this one to 180. And now if I play this again, you can see it's not working, but that is because this gear is rotating along the Z axis. So we want to turn the Y source axis to Z instead. And now you can see it's rotating correctly, except it's rotating in the opposite direction. So instead of 180, we need to change it to negative 180. But it's a lot more intuitive to me to apply the object rotation, so I recommend doing that if you can, because if you're thinking about rigging this, you might think, okay, I wanna rotate this along the X axis, so I'd wanna use the X right here. But in this case, because I didn't apply the rotation, we'd wanna use Y instead. So that's how you can rig gears in Blender using object constraints. And again, if you'd like to download this Blender file, I'll have a free download of the project files in the video description on my Gearmod store and Patreon page. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can throw in a dollar or two into the price box on Gumroad before purchasing. That's a great way to send me a little tip, or you can just punch in zero into the price box and download for free on my Gumroad store, and there will also be a link to it on my Patreon page. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.